Today, I'll be talking about all things with the Interactive Brokers platform, including the basic stuff like buying, selling, managing positions, and some of the cool features that this broker has. So stay tuned till the end to find out more. Cha-ching! What's up everyone, welcome back to another video with the Millennial Finance. As I mentioned in a previous video, IBKR has been one of my favorite platforms so far. A lot of my money is still currently stuck in another broker, but as soon as it's clear, I'm thinking of moving all of my long-term holdings towards this platform. One thing that I missed out in my previous video that you guys helped point me out was that the minimum fee wasn't actually $1, it was more 30 to 35 cents per trade. This can be done by switching your account from IBKR Pro to IBKR Lite. It's a great thing and when I found out, I changed it immediately. So as usual, kudos to you guys. One of the cons that I brought up about this platform was that the user interactiveness or the user experience wasn't as great as the new age brokers like Weibo and eToro. And that's why I thought that this video would be even more important so that all of you guys know how to at least use the basic features and I can point out some of the cool features of this platform that you can use as well just so you get the hang of how to use the Interactive Brokers platform. So before I get started, if you guys want to use the Interactive Brokers platform, you can use our link down in the description below. You can sign up, create your account and you should be ready to use it really really quickly. It really supports the channel and we appreciate your help. So once you've clicked that link, you should see this page right here. If you don't have an account, of course, click the open account button. But since I already have one, I'm going to click login. All right, so I'm logged in to my Interactive Brokers account. You can see that I currently have $2,747. Um, this is basically the dashboard and every time you log in, you will see this as the first page. Here, you can basically see how your money has gone up over time. Um, this one is not that I'm some investing guru who made $500 into $2,700. I just deposited money, so it doesn't really count. No, I didn't have 445% returns in one month. Over here, you can see as well, I have my settled cash here, buying power of 8,500. This is not the cash that I have in this account. It's actually because I have a margin account with Interactive Brokers, which is why they gave me more buying power. Scrolling down to the bottom, you can also see there are my top portfolio positions, watch list, managing my account, and yeah, nothing much. A very simple dashboard page uh, just to basically keep track of how your portfolio is. So moving on to the portfolio. You click on here, you can see a few things. I'm going to open my positions. I hope you guys don't take a look at my positions and decide that you want to buy these stocks. This is of course not um, a recommendation. You guys should always do your own due diligence, but yeah. These are the stocks that I currently have in my portfolio. And you can see here I have the instrument name, the position size. So you can see here that I do have fractional shares. And Interactive Brokers, one of the best things I like about this platform is the fractional shares. You can see that Google is $2,900 per share. I'm not going to invest that much in Google, so I have 0 0.0876. Very small, but also because I'm waiting for a pullback on Google before I load the boat. So then there are other stuff here. You can see the change percentage, your cost basis, market value, the average price that you have in, your daily PL and your unrealized PL. So the reason my daily PL is zero is because today is the weekend. I'm recording this on a weekend, and of course the stock market is not open, so they put it at zero. At the top, you can see I have a total unrealized PL of $56. Nothing too amazing. I just uh, restarted investing in this account. So I hope this number starts growing, of course. If you click on these positions, for example, I have Amazon here, you can buy more, you can sell some of your positions, or you can close the entire position if you wanted to. So everything is pretty straightforward. It's very easy to do just from this portfolio page itself. Scrolling down to the bottom, you can see your cash. So I have $323 um, in cash. For those of you who deposit in Singapore dollars, um, those from Malaysia, Singapore, I highly recommend you do it. From Malaysians, you can open a CIMB Singapore account deposit with Singapore dollars and you should see the amount pop up at the bottom here and you can basically click it and then convert it to US dollars. Since I've converted all of mine, my Singapore dollar is no longer here. You can also take a look at your performance. Um, I'm not really going to go into too much detail here but one cool thing that I wanted to bring up is this thing called the impact dashboard. This is actually something that I think Interactive Brokers was the first to do and they also have it on some of the other brokers that use their platform like Zax Trade. So basically what this is, is that a lot of investors, and I would say especially young investors like us, we don't just want to invest money, we want to invest money knowing that the companies that we invest in are not causing harm to some things that we believe in. If this is the first time you're opening this, you basically set your preferences, what values you support, and what practices you want to avoid. 
So going to the bottom, you can see all my positions and how it aligns with my values. Um, I can actually see here as well, practices you avoid. What is the problem? It's Amazon. Amazon aligns with corporate political spending and lobbying and greenhouse emissions as well. I assume it's from all the deliveries and they conveniently put the trade button here because I don't know, I guess once I see this, I'm going to sell Amazon. Well, to be honest, I'm not going to sell Amazon. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty cool feature to have. It tracks a lot of stocks in the US market. It doesn't do so for ETFs, of course, but while it doesn't directly impact the performance of your investments, it's something cool to have just so we know that we're investing aligning with our goals. It's a pretty cool feature to have while it doesn't directly impact our performance, of course, it's pretty good knowing that our investments align with our values. Moving on to the part that many of you probably think is the most important one, it's trading. So going here to this tab, you can see that um, clicking on the stock. So there are many others, options, futures, board, CFDs. I won't go through this, but looking at stocks, this is basically how you make a purchase with interactive brokers. So as usual, I'm going to be using Apple as my benchmark. And when I open this here, you can see that there are many Apple stocks. Um, I think these are from different exchanges. So for example, LSC ETF here, this is from the London Stock Exchange. What we want to be looking for, of course, is a US one. So Apple is listed on the NASDAQ. Some may be on the NYSE. So I just click this right here. And I'm basically making a buy order instead of a sell. So here's where you can choose whether you want fractional shares. If you're just going to buy the entire share, you can click here. You can buy 100 shares for $15,000. I don't have that much money, unfortunately. So I'm going to click USD and I can put any amount that I want right here. So I'm going to say $100. Order type. So order type, I guess you guys are quite familiar with it already. Um, Interactive Brokers has something called mid price. It's pretty good. And I think they try to fill your order as best as they can at the mid price between the bid and the ask. Most of the times so I actually use the limit or I'll just use a market order. So let's say I'm using limit. Time in force is basically how long you want this order to be valid. So if you want to buy Apple at this price and you don't mind when it's going to be filled, most investors should have this feeling. So you change this to good till cancel. And this basically means that I want my order to fill outside of market hours. So meaning pre-market or post-market. One thing to note is that fractional shares cannot be filled outside RTH. So if you try to submit the buy order, it won't work. If you're buying a full share, then you can enable this. That's basically how you make an order with interactive brokers. Very simple, very straightforward, nice interface. You can do the same with all these other products, but I'm not going to show it. And then once you've made the order, you can go over here, orders and trades. So you can see that these are the trades that I've made recently. They've all been filled. And this is an order that I have. I'm trying to buy KWEB at 49.6. It hasn't filled. It hasn't reached this price which is why the status is pre-submitted. Assuming that when the market opens, KWEP drops to this price, the order will turn into a trade and this will be blank. So yeah, very simple to use. You can even turn on trade notifications if you want to know when your orders are filled. So next up, we have this tab called the markets. I'm not going to go through the scanner. I would think it's pretty common. So I'm going to go through the market overview. This is something that I think is pretty cool. So they will basically give you an overview of the day. The highlight of Friday was that Apple stocks decline because of court ruling. So basically, we've been posting this on our story as well. Apps are complaining that Apple is forcing them to basically use their app store for payments. And as a result of that, apps, all apps have to pay Apple a fee of around 30%. So recently, Spotify won that case. They said, I don't want to pay Apple at 30% anymore. And a court ruling actually made Apple not impose this ruling to all other apps as well. So yeah, Apple fell 3%. It was the big news of the day and you can click on read more. But you can also have an overview of the indexes. So US, um, we have Europe, Stocks 50, Euronext 100 and the DAX. And then Asia, we have the Nikkei 225, Australia and then Hang Seng Index. So this is all basically an overview of the day. We also have today's top news. Uh, I'm not sure why this is not working right now, but it's pretty cool. I saw it before during a market open day. Basically, this is the top news of the entire day. And then they have a sentiment here, whether this is good or bad for the stock market. So you can click on here, you can go through it. And yeah, usually at the bottom, there should be some sentiment. Maybe these news don't have it, but it's a pretty cool feature again by Interactive Brokers. And then you have 
big moves. So any stocks that are making big moves during the day, um, Interactive Brokers basically helps us explain why it's moving. I'll go more into that later. Um, performance by sector and then equity around the world, how the stock market around the world is performing. So, so a lot of other stuff down here. Volatility is something that we as investors look out for as well. So the United States will be the VIX and there's Germany and Japan. The VIX actually went up 11% on Friday. That is kind of scary. So we're going to be keeping an eye out on that. So next up, we have the Discover tab. Um, why is it moving? I think this is pretty cool. So all stocks that made big moves during the day, they list it down here and they have the reasons. So for example, Tilray, it's trading lower after stockholders approved an increase in number of shares. Um, Fizz, it's trading higher because the Q1 results were good. So this is pretty interesting as well. We can take a look at all the big news of the day. You can see Apple is here as well. And yeah, that's pretty much the Discover tab. Next up, we have the Portfolio Analyst. Um, I again think this is pretty cool. I'm going to sound pretty silly because I think everything is cool with this platform. Of course, there are some cons, but I actually also found this out when I was doing research for this video because I have never clicked this tab until very recently. So you can get an overview and this basically shows um, your performance, your net asset value and then your performance against the SPY. So you can see here that my performance, they show it as negative 2.32 when the SPY is flat. Um, this doesn't really make sense. Now this over the last seven days, let me just click year to date. So you can see here, it's showing that I'm slightly underperforming the S&P 500. It doesn't, it didn't make sense to me. So I did further digging. It's because of my cash position. So apparently interactive brokers does take into consideration my conversion from Singapore dollars to USD. Apparently I'm losing out on that. Um, to me, what I want to see is my actual stock performance. I know the conversion rate will impact me as a Malaysian investor, but yeah, the reason that I don't see myself beating the S&P 500 yet is because of this. If you look at just my equities position, I'm up 2.6%, which is great. So the next cool thing that I want to talk about is the reports. So you can see these are the default reports. I'm going to click previous month and I'm going to show you how a detailed report from Interactive Brokers looks like. It's incredibly cool and I've never seen another broker that I've actually used myself show this level of detail in terms of what we can look at our investments. Okay, so this is my portfolio analyst um, detailed report. I'm just going to go through some of the interesting things I found out. So it shows here my cumulative return, 5-day return, 10-day return, doesn't really matter to me. And these are my open positions like I showed you guys just now. So these are the stocks and the ETFs that I hold. But here is the first interesting thing that they have is that in my top 25 holdings, they have broken down the investments that I've made in the ETFs. So take a look at this. Top 25 holdings, I have Tencent Holdings and Alibaba Group. Look, I don't own any Tencent stock or Alibaba stock, but because I own the KWeb ETF, it breaks it down for me and basically shows me the value of my holding in these stocks through the ETF. This is very helpful. Um, one of the reasons why is because let's say you put Apple at 10% of your portfolio and then you invest in the S&P 500 at 50%. In reality, you're owning way more than 10% of Apple because Apple is a big position at S&P 500. So this shows us um, exactly what stocks we're investing in, even though it's through an ETF. So this is really cool to me. I've never seen this before. Other than this, I'm just going to scroll down real quick again. And you can see my allocation by sector, my performance by sector. You can see some risk analysis if you're into this sort of stuff. And you can look at my top performance. So cyber has been doing very well. This is cyber security ETF and then my bottom performance, apparently USD has been performing really poorly. So my conversion from Singapore dollars to USD, ah, that sucked. Finally, there's this heat map thing. So I think a lot of you guys may have seen this before, the Finviz heat map of the entire S&P 500 or NASDAQ 100. They've sort of done that for me, except it's my portfolio. So I hold very few stocks, so you can see it here. And yeah, it's a pretty good way to just represent or show how our portfolio is doing in terms of what stocks we own. I really like this from Interactive Brokers. I'm going to go through the other stuff later on. But when I found out about this while preparing for this video, um, I found it very, very insightful.
So the same thing that I talked to you guys about before about the holdings, you can also click concentration right here and take a look. So again, you can see 700, which is Tencent Holdings, Baba, JD, Meituan. Basically, it looks like I have so many stocks, but it's just because I invested in the ETFs themselves. Finally, there's the ESG rating. So many of you may be familiar with this. It's the environmental, social, and governance score of the stocks that I own. And you can see here, it's 565. Five. Um, this stuff do matter to me. I want to make sure that I invest in companies that align with my values, like I mentioned earlier. Doesn't look that great here, so I'll probably just dive deeper into this later on. So the final thing that I wanted to show you guys is how to deposit or withdraw your money. You can do it by clicking transfer and pay here. Transfer funds. I click deposit, which is why I'm here. So you can see that I have two safe banks, which is my CME bank in Malaysia and my Singapore account. So I did this initially when I only used my Malaysian bank account to um, deposit money. Once I found out about the Singapore CIMB trick, I no longer use this and I only use my Singapore account. So you basically click this, um, they'll show you the steps about how to deposit. It's very straightforward and it will be the same for withdrawals as well. Other than this, the platform also has um, reports that you can go through. You can also go through your account management to basically track um, what you can trade, what you cannot trade and selling some of the other stuff that you can do. So that pretty much sums up my platform walkthrough of the Interactive Brokers platform. I hope you guys found it insightful like I did with the eToro one. There's a lot more stuff to it, definitely. So if you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comments below. We'll try as best as we can to answer them. If you guys want to sign up for Interactive Brokers, use our link. Uh, we'll leave it in the description below. It really helps the channel and we appreciate your support. Let us know down in the comments below. Would you use Interactive Brokers? Thanks for watching this video to the end guys. Give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.